Alright, 2020 is over, and not much movies came out in 2020 due to the pandemic, so keep in mind that a lot of movies will end up on this list that I usually would not include. So, let's get this top 5 list started. Number 5. The Invisible Man The interesting thing is that this is actually the last movie I saw in theatres before the pandemic hit. Me and my brother saw it and we had a very good time. The setup for The Invisible Man and his victim was great. The contemporary story and method for The Invisible Man to exist was also really great. And the scares were quite creative. And the way he tries to frame her for increasingly bigger stuff is surprising and even shocking at times. One scene in particular, and if you've seen the movie, then you all know which scene I'm talking about. The only downsides I had with this movie is that it just felt too cheap. The film is from Blumhouse, so the budget, as you would expect, is very small. It's working with a $7 million budget, and that is very limiting with regards to the other creative possibilities that could have been explored. For example, he may be invisible, but that doesn't mean that he should be as silent as he was in this movie. There were also scenes, such as when she covers him with paint. I thought this was going to be a big problem for him, but in just seconds he manages to wash himself off, and I thought that was super cheap. Paint doesn't just wash off that quick, and even the slightest amount of residue would cause those eye-tracking cameras of his to malfunction. But they don't explore that, and many other avenues because I'm assuming it would be too expensive to pull it off visually. So they kept pulling back on certain things in order to save on money, and you could really tell. And this shows throughout the entire film. Also, some of the reasons the characters had for not trusting our main character was very questionable, especially when it came to a family member. But on the whole, it was a very enjoyable film. Number 4. Love and Monsters this was a movie that I had no expectations for, a movie about a post-apocalyptic world with giant killer insects. But it was getting a lot of good reviews, so I gave it a watch, and I was surprised to find that the reviews were actually right. This really was a nice family film, with just enough darkness to elevate it from being too family-friendly. The effects were good enough for a home streaming movie, they were even better than I expected for this caliber of film, and the action scenes and the tension was very well handled, and there are times where I thought the film would be very predictable, but thankfully, it wasn't. The movie threw just enough surprises that kept me interested. And the lead character, played by Dylan O'Brien, who goes from being inexperienced to the warrior that he becomes, it was a great journey of character development, leaving enough room for him to grow even further in the future. I even found myself really liking the side characters in this movie, and I'm including the dog in that too. This was also a great character that you cared for. And one of the side characters we get is Yondu from Guardians of the Galaxy, and his role in the movie was a very relevant one for Dylan O'Brien's character development. And the little girl with him was also really good in the movie as well. And the movie even had quite a lot of good humour as well. If I had any problems with it, it would be the overly optimistic and encouraging ending. It should not be that happy-go-lucky, and I really would call bullshit on that. People nowadays are afraid to go out of their house because of a pandemic. Do you seriously think that they would go out there if there are a bunch of giant killer insects? But aside from that very far-fetched ending, I highly recommend the movie. Really, give it a watch if you want a good family film with a little bit of an edge to it. And I really do hope that it gets a sequel. Number 3. Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge Okay, now this is not at all a well-written movie. It is so corny, and if you gave this dialogue to actors in a live-action film, then this would be terrible. But because we are watching animation, you give the movie a lot of leeway and are more willing to accept it for its over-the-top nonsense. And that's why I really enjoyed Mortal Kombat Scorpion's Revenge, and it's a movie that is violent as hell. It models the violence after the recent games, and you get the X-ray attacks, and you even get the fatalities. You even get most of your Mortal Kombat characters in here. You get Raiden, Liu Kang, Sonya, Johnny Cage, and several others. And I really liked the dynamic between the characters and watching them kick butt, especially when it came to delivering the x-ray attacks and the fatalities. It was just so much fun to watch, and I can't stress enough how gruesome the action is in this movie. It ends with a cliffhanger, and I really want to see the sequel. I can only hope that the new Mortal Kombat movie that Warner Brothers have made is also rated R, and if it's anything as violent as this, then that would be so awesome. If you have been stuck with those PG-13 Mortal Kombat films from the 90s, and wanted to watch an R-rated movie of Mortal Kombat, then this is the movie you have been waiting for, as it is bloody awesome. Number 2. Jojo Rabbit. Now I know, I know that this movie was said to have come out in 2019, but here in the UK, the movie didn't come out until the 1st of January 2020. So for me, this movie counts as a 2020 release. So I'm not being unreasonable, I am being totally fair here. It's not just me being cheap because there were not very much movies to choose this year. Anyway, this is honestly a movie that I didn't care to see, but once I finally saw it, I was surprised to find out how strange, bizarre, ridiculous, silly, yet very sweet and moving it was. The development of the main character Jojo is what makes this movie work. The kid has to carry this whole entire movie, and his relationship and interactions with the rest of the characters, including his mother, his school teachers, and the girl hiding up in their house, are very fun to watch. The movie was directed by Taika Waititi, who made the overly jokey Thor Ragnarok, and he has jokes here, but unlike Thor Ragnarok, when things get emotional, he does not 
not break the drama of the moment with a silly and immature joke. And that's what I like about this movie. It very smartly uses comedy and drama to tell the story. And it works. And because of its UK release date, it just manages to scrape a spot onto this list. Now the next movie, as soon as I saw it, I said to myself, this is going to be on my number one list of 2020. And throughout the year, I thought there was a chance that something could come and take its place. But in the end, nothing did. And the number one best movie of 2020 is... Star Wars The Clone Wars The Siege of Mandalore. I know, this is a TV show, not a movie, but The Siege of Mandalore is a four-part, one-hour and thirty-minute epic conclusion to The Clone Wars, and if The Clone Wars movie could stick the first four episodes together and call it a movie, then we can certainly do that with the last four episodes. And if that still isn't good enough of an excuse for you, then keep in mind that this is my show, and I can do whatever the fuck I want. What can I say about the Clone Wars finale that I haven't already said in my Clone Wars binge watch video? It's action packed, it's got an amazing story, it's rich with characters, it's epic, it's painfully tragic, it's emotional, it's got beautiful cinematography, fantastic music, and it did certain plot points that The Last Jedi tried and completely failed at, and it executed them extraordinarily well here. And it was the most intense movie or TV show watching experience I've had throughout the whole year. Star Wars The Clone Wars really has become my favourite thing with regards to Star Wars, and it even makes the prequels more comprehensible, and it makes Revenge of the Sith a much better film. The Siege of Mandalore is one of the most perfect conclusions I have ever seen for a TV show. It's right up there with the ending to Avatar The Last Airbender, and it is by far the best movie I have seen in 2020. And all the credit goes to Dave Filoni, who is behind the awesomeness of this show and the amazing conclusion, and he even said that he looked at this as a movie, and he did a spectacular job. Thank you very much, Dave Filoni. Watching you bring the Clone Wars back after Disney stupidly cancelled it was the highlight of the year. So if you want to watch my review of the best movie of 2020 and know more in depth as to why I really love it, then check out my review of the final season of The Clone Wars where I go in depth as to how amazing it is. And I even made a teaser trailer for the video which pretty much sums up the emotional core of what Star Wars The Clone Wars is. And if you look at IMDb, the last four episodes, they've practically broken the scale with regards to how high of a score they've got. So, those are my best movies of 2020. Comment below and let me know what your top 5 best movies of 2020 are. I am very curious to know. And stay tuned, as my next video will be my top 5 worst movies of 2020. And there are some real stinkers there, let me tell ya. Thank you very much as always for watching, guys. If you liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And I will see all of you very soon. Take care.